Sutra. It would be better to constantly and completely endure all of the world's suffering than to ever be apart from the Tathagatas and not see their power of self-mastery. If there are living beings who have not brought forth the result for Bodhi, upon once hearing the Buddha's name, they will certainly accomplish Bodhi. Commentary It would be better to constantly and completely endure all of the world's suffering than to ever be apart from the Tathagatas and not see their power of self-mastery. To eat but not eat your fill, to dress but not dress warm enough is called enduring suffering. That means at all time one is willing to completely and incessantly endure suffering on behalf of all the people in the world. There are three kinds of sufferings, the three sufferings, the eight sufferings, and the limitless sufferings. You want to endure them all. You'd rather undergo this than to ever be apart from the Tathagatas. The reason you want to undergo this suffering is so that you are never separated from the Buddhas you vow. I'd rather receive the suffering of living beings than to ever be apart from the Buddha Dharma. I want to constantly see the Buddha's awesome spiritual powers of self-mastery. I want to see the Buddha, hear the drama, and see the Sangha. If there are living beings who have not brought forth the result for Bodhi, upon once hearing the Buddha's name, they will certainly accomplish Bodhi. Suppose in this world there are living beings who haven't been able to draw near the Triple Jewel, who haven't been able to meet with a good knowing advisor, who haven't been able to give rise to the resolve to become enlightened. They haven't produced the resolve for Bodhi. However, if they can hear the Buddha's name just one time, it is a certainty that one day they can become enlightened. If it passes the, by the ear just once, it's eternally a seed of the way. On this one occasion, that they hear the Buddha's name, a virus seed is planted within the eighth consciousness and there is no way that it can be destroyed. So the Bodhisattva assures us in this verse, they will certainly accomplish Bodhi. In the future, these people will accomplish proper and equal right enlightenment, the fruition of Buddhahood. Sutra if there is a person of wisdom who in a single thought can bring forth a mind for the way, he will certainly become an unsurpassed honored one, but he must be cautious not to produce doubts or delusions. The Tathagata's power of ease and comfort is difficult to meet in measureless compass. If one produces a single thought of faith, one will quickly certify to the unsurpassed way. Supposing within thought after thought, one makes offerings to limitless Buddhas and yet fails to know the true and actual Dharma, then one can't be said to be making offerings. Commentary, if there is a person of wisdom, now suppose there is a person with wisdom. Originally, he doesn't have wisdom, but supposing he acquires some, and further this person in a single thought can bring forth a mind for the way. In a single thought, he can bring forth a mind for body. Then he will certainly become an unsurpassed honored one, because he is a person of wisdom. In a single thought, he brought forth a mind for Bodhi, to the extent that in thought after thought his mind is set on Bodhi, and so he will certainly become an unsurpassed honored one. He will certainly accomplish Buddhahood, but he must be cautious not to produce doubts or delusions. All of you living beings should certainly not harbor any doubts with regard to this principle. You shouldn't produce a mind of doubt. In a single thought, you produce a mind for Bodhi, but then you start to have doubts. Will I be able to accomplish Buddhahood? You have this doubt. If I have just one thought of producing a mind for the way, how can I possibly accomplish Buddhahood? Be careful that you don't produce such thoughts of doubts and delusions. The Tathagata's power of ease and comfort is difficult to meet in measureless compass. The Buddha has self-mastery and great awesome spiritual powers, and in measureless compass it is difficult to meet. In measureless and boundless compass of time, 
It isn't easy to meet the Buddha. It's not easy to meet one of proper and equal right enlightenment. However, if one produces a single thought of faith, one will quickly satisfy to the unsurpassed way. If a person is able to produce a mind of faith within a single thought, then he can very quickly accomplish Buddhahood, the unsurpassed way, the fruition of Buddhahood. Supposing within thought after thought, one makes offerings to the meekless Buddhas. Supposing in each thought you can make offerings to the meekless and boundless Buddhas, that many Buddhas, and yet such a one fails to know the true natural Dharma, then one can't be said to be making offerings. If you can't understand the true and real mark of the Buddha Dharma, if you can't understand the ultimate Dharma of Nirvana, then this can't be called making offerings. If you can't understand this true and actual principle, then even if you were to make offerings to the meatless and boundless Buddhas, still you wouldn't be truly making offerings. Making true offerings is when you understand the principle of the ultimate Dharma of true marks. When you understand the principle that the true mark is without marks. When you understand the principle that all Dharmas are empty and you don't become attached to marks. When within marks, you don't apart from marks and not attached to marks. Then this is the true and actual offering. But if you don't understand that offerings should be apart from marks, then these offerings can't be called true and actual offerings. Sutra. If one hears such dramas from which all Buddhas are born, although one passes through the midlist of sufferings, still one does not renounce the practice of body. Upon one's hearing of great wisdom, this drama which all Buddhas enter, universally throughout the drum realm, one becomes a guiding master of the three burdens of time. Although one may exhaust the vows of the future, but receive roaming throughout all Buddha lands. If one does not seek this wonderful drama, one will never be able to accomplish body. Commentary If one hears such dramas from which all Buddhas are born, previously it was said in a verse that supposing within thought after thought one makes offerings to the meatless Buddhas and yet fails to know the true and actual dharma, then one can be said to be making offerings. So it says, if one hears such dharmas, these true and actual dharmas, what are true and actual dharmas? They are dharmas which are apart from marks. What are dharmas which are apart from marks? This refers to the mind seal dharma. What is the mind seal dharma? The mind seal dharma is apart from words and language. It's the mind that's apart from the marks of reasoning, is apart from language. Apart from all marks, it's just all dharmas. This is the primary meaning of the middle way. What is the primary meaning of the middle way? It isn't one sided. You do not fall into existence nor do you get hung up in emptiness. Not being attached to either emptiness or existence is the meaning of the middle way. The middle way is real mark, wonderful drama. The real mark, wonderful drama is the understanding of the meaning of the middle way. Such drama refers to the ultimate meaning of the middle way from which all Buddhas are born. What dharmas are all Buddhas produced from? They are produced from the real mark, that which is markless and yet not devoid of any marks. This is the mind still wonderful drama, the primary meaning of the middle way. It is true emptiness which doesn't obstruct wonderful existence and wonderful existence which doesn't obstruct true emptiness. That is the drama spoken of here, and whoever obtains this drama will be able to accomplish Buddhahood. If you can rely on this drama to cultivate, then you will be able to accomplish Buddhahood. If you don't rely on this ultimate drama of the middle way to cultivate, then you're still a living being. So the Bodhisattva tells us that it is that from which all Buddhas are born. All Buddhas are born from understanding the meaning of the middle way. Although one passes through all the sufferings, still one does not renounce the practice of Bodhi. If you can cultivate this drama, even to the point of personally undergoing the suffering, then you won't renounce the practice of Bodhi. 
not retreating from Bodhi conduct is just to cultivate the ultimate meaning of the middle way. It is also cultivating the wonderful mind seal dharma, the real mark dharma, and the inconceivable dharma for which the path of language and words is cut off, the place of the mind's activities is extinguished. Therefore, one doesn't ever retreat from the Bodhi conduct. One doesn't ever turn away from the drama of the middle way. Upon one's hearing of great wisdom, this drama which all Buddhas enter, universally throughout the drama realm, one becomes a guiding master of the three builders of time. Upon hearing of the drama of great wisdom, one produces great wisdom. If you cultivate this drama, you produce great wisdom. What drama is this? This is what was previously spoken of the mind seal dharma, the dharma from which all Buddhas are born. All Buddhas come forth from this dharma and all Buddhas enter this dharma. To enter this dharma, you need to understand it, then you can accomplish Buddhahood. All Buddhas also enter and cultivate this dharma. This dharma totally pervades the exhaustion, the exhaustion of empty space and the dharma realm. Those who cultivate to become guiding masters of the three builders of time become Buddhas of the past, present, and future. As far as living beings of the present, although we haven't accomplished Buddhahood yet, we are all future Buddhas. You shouldn't look down upon yourself as being so small, so unimportant, and so common. People say few words to you and you can't put it down. For example, somebody says you are no good and it's just about knocks you over to the point that you can't get up. You say to yourself, oh, I'm no good, I can't cultivate. Oh, I don't have right to be cultivating, I'm really rotten. They all say I'm rotten, my cultivation is absolutely useless. And all you say, oh, I'm no good, I don't have anything going for me, I'm just too rotten, too rotten, no, you're just too good, you can be good, so why do you fall over and not get up, just stand up, don't fall over and let people ra push you around, don't be such a spineless worm. A person with any backbone has his feet on the ground and his head in the heavens all the time. So if somebody says you're no good, you should reflect. You say I'm no good, I'll give you something to look at. And not, they all say I'm no good, I can't handle it any longer, I'm just going to lay down and die, that's the best. You prefer to die rather than cultivate, they all look down on me so I'm going to commit suicide. They were all bad to me, I just want to die. You have to courage to kill yourself, but you don't have the courage to cultivate. What meaning is there in this? A person who wants to die and not cultivate can't even make it into the rank of being considered a stupid person. After all, if you reached the point where you're willing to die, then it should be even more okay to cultivate. You should have the attitude. I cultivate and you can just consider me as if dead. After all, you cultivate in order to be a living dead person. It means you are going to kill all of your desires, all of your greed for fame, offerings and so forth, all of those desires. One may exhaust the bounds of the future, that is exhaust all future compass, but we simply roaming throughout all Buddha lands. One goes to Buddha lands, to all Buddha lands, drawing near to and make offerings to all Buddhas. However, if one does not seek this wonderful Dharma, if one doesn't seek this wonderful mind seal Dharma, if one doesn't understand the primary meaning of the middle way as being the real mark, which is unmarked, then one will never be able to accomplish Bodhi. It doesn't matter how long or how far you travel, you'll never accomplish Buddhahood. If you want to accomplish Buddhahood, you absolutely have to understand that true emptiness doesn't obstruct wonderful existence, and wonderful existence doesn't obstruct true emptiness. True emptiness isn't empty, and wonderful existence doesn't exist. This is the ultimate meaning of the middle way. This is the mind seal dharma. All dharmas, all Buddhas have transmitted this mind seal dharma. If you don't understand the mind seal dharma, you won't obtain the wonderful dharma, nor will you accomplish Bodhi. No matter how long you cultivate, you won't be able to accomplish Buddhahood. 
the first thing you have to do in order to cultivate this dharma is to cut off all desire. If you can't cut off desire, then you won't be able to leave the dust. You won't be able to transcend the triple dream. Therefore, in cultivating this dharma, you have to sever the mind of sexual desire. Each of you should pay particular attention to this point. Men shouldn't think about fighting wives. Women shouldn't go looking for husbands. If you want to cultivate but can't put down the pleasures of the world, then you won't be able to attain the fruition. So he said, fish and bear paws are both delicious, but you can't eat them both at the same time. If you want to cultivate world transcending dramas, you can't hang on to worldly dramas. If you want to hang on to worldly dramas, you how are you going to transcend the world? However, although we wish to cultivate transcendental dramas, we should realize that the Buddha drama can be found right in the world. It can't be looked for apart from the world. To look for a body apart from the world is like looking for a rabbit with horns. Sixth Patriarch Sutra. And so you should study world transcending drama right within the world and not seek normal path from the world.